Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. See that? You heard that? I go to church every Sunday. Who go to church every Sunday? I'm going to show you something. Hold on. Everybody go to church on Sunday. I do. Is that the day? Hold on. Is that the day that we should be praising God? Yes. No. no, every day. No, we should every, day. every day. Blood. But there's a set day. Read it again. Genesis 2 and 3. Listen. Genesis 2 and 3 and it reads. What book are you reading from? Genesis. <laughs> right? It's in the Bible. Hold on. Read. Come on. And God blessed the seventh day. He know he blessed the first day. And, and God, God blessed the seventh day. The fifth day. The and God blessed the seventh day. What is the seventh day of the week? Monday to Tuesday. No, don't start with Monday. Oh. Sunday is the first day of the week. Right. Friday, Tuesday. Okay, Sunday's day one. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So why do people do it on Sunday? Wake him up, huh? But but what, what, did God, what did God say? Read that again. God bless the seventh day. He said the seventh day. See that? The seventh day. The seventh day is the seventh day. Right, that's right. That's right. That's the day of rest. See, we gotta see our, our youth, we gotta hear the word to life. We can't just be out here just dressing like anything and right. following the ways of, 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 of uh, uh, Nicki Minaj. Bring it up. Right? right? We got to learn the truth. Right. Right? So read on. So on the Sabbath day, guess what you can do? You're supposed to do You can't work. You can't buy. sell. You can't do your own pleasure. You can't cook. You can't do no labor on that day. Right. You was like, no cooking me. No. Give me Exodus 16 and 22. All of your food has to be prepared the day before. Right? So the sun is about to go down soon. Right? So bring that up. Exodus. 16 and 22. Exodus 16 verse 22. Read it out. And it came to pass that on the sixth day. On the sixth day. So guess what? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So the day before the Sabbath. They gathered twice as much bread. We gathered twice as much bread. That's the manna that came from heaven. Two armors for one man. Right. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said, Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and see that that ye will see. Bake what you have to bake today. Seed meaning boil you what you have to boil you today. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So you only, you have to prep and cook before the Sabbath. What Bible? It's the regular King James Bible. Oh, James. Right? Regular King James. That's the Bible I have, we, we all have. Right? So it tells you that. On a Sabbath day, that means, you know, in these churches, they're cooking. I don't understand why are they doing it. Why are they doing it? Well, well, ultimately, Really, Sunday, on a deeper level, Sunday is actually worship, sun worship. Yeah. It goes back to the Roman Empire. You know, every day of the week, believe it or not, is named after, have you, have you heard of the Romans? The Romans had a pantheon of gods, right? They had Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, see that? They had a god of the sun. Apollos was the god of the sun, right? The Romans worshipped the sun. So they incorporated sun worship with God's rest day. Every day of the week is named after a Roman god. Every month is named after a Roman god. January is named after a false god named Janus, which is the god of duality, portals, right? February is named after a so-called god. March. Named after Mars. These are all named after Roman gods. So when people are going into Sunday worship, they're literally worshiping the sun. That's why every church has a cross on it and has a sun, a circle embedded in it. And there's always a sun behind all of the pictures of Jesus Christ. Or then now it's a halo. They put it on top of the head. There's no halo in the Bible. Right? You read the whole Bible, you don't see the word halo not one time. Right? That all goes back to Greek mythology and sun worship. So then, 
our people adopted them. And we learned the Bible from our oppressor. This is why we do Sunday, right? And, and it's a big staple in the so-called black community to get up in the morning and go to church with your grandmother and your auntie and, and, and sit there and you don't learn anything. And you always see a false image and you leave out having a good time, feeling good, but you don't know anything about who you are. The music is good. Right. The food is good in the basement. Right, right. He wrapping up the pound cake and the string beans on the plate with the trays, and it's a lot of family there and people dressing up and got the hats and the gloves and the the usher, with the usher teach around and the collection plate going around. Right, but yeah, nobody. That's what I, hate. I ate it too. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah. and nobody knows anything. Right, you know there's another commandment that we can't even eat certain foods. Did y'all know that? Wake them up, uh. Uh. There are certain foods that we can't eat. And if you eat it, it's a sin. Oh, I think it's crab, seafood. Crab, seafood. What about, give me Leviticus 11 and 7. Leviticus 11 and 7 and it reads, and the swine. Give me uh, Ezekiel uh, 24 and 3. And the swine. And the what? And, and the, the swine. swine. What is swine? S-W-I-N-E. That's a fish, I know. That's a fish, I got smartphones, Android, iPhone. Yes. Look it up, type in swine. S W I N E. We're not supposed to eat anything that's in the water. Keep right. Well, we're gonna get to that. There are certain things you can eat in the water, uh -huh. and there are other things that you cannot eat in the water. That's a swine. What's another name for the swine? A pig. A pig. A pig. Oh, swine. Swine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, pig. yeah. Let, let's see. Read yeah. that. And the what? And the swine. And the pig. The and hawk. The swine. Go on. Though he devised the hook. <laughs> and be cloven-footed. Yeah, he chew of not the cut. He is what? He is he unclean, unclean unto you. He is what? He, he is unclean unto you. you. You can't eat that. I know, I don't eat meat. That's good. I don't eat meat. What about your grandbabies, your grandkids? Well, they don't do it with me. I don't okay, all right, well. Like bacon. And... No more, y'all can't eat meat. It's kind of <laughs> rubbing that, that beard I'm coming in, food, brother. I'm just food and veggies. Okay, all right, no, no more eating pork, right? No more eating swine. Our forefathers never ate swine. That's right. <laughs> That's, what That's call it, bacon, pass. scrapple, ham, pepperoni, Stop sausage, food. bologna, all of that. God said we can't eat it. The pig is the filthiest animal created. Filthy. We never ate that. Give me Ezekiel 24 and 3. Why Ezekiel 24 so and verse 3. Hold on, you said what? Why the churches don't tell you that you're not supposed to eat? Why don't what? The churches, the pastors. That's the pork well, chops. Well, why, why the pastor don't tell you? It's because right. really... The pastor, nine times out of ten, they don't know, right? And if they do know, their job is to get this money. That's right. Right? Yeah, that's all so they're not going to tell you something that, that keeps you away from the church, right? And we're going to go more into it, so read that. Ezekiel. Right. Ezekiel 24, verse 3. Right. And utter a parable unto the rebellious house. This is what the Lord said. And said to them, thus saith the Lord God. Set on a pot. Do what? Set, Set on, on a, a pot. pot. Let's see what our forefathers was cooking in the pot. Because right now we cook, what are we cooking in the pots? Chitlins? You squeezing out all the... Oh, that means you had it before. You never had chitlins? You had chitlins? Who cooked you chitlins? All right, see, you got to tell your mother. You got to tell your mother we can't eat that. God says we can't do it. The Lord's... Right, the Lord says, set on a what? Set on a pot. Set on a pot. You kind of turn that uh, uh, um, burner off. Read. Set it on, and also pour water into it. Put that water, you might get it from the sink or whatever, go on. Gather the pieces thereof into it. Let's see what kind of meat he was putting in the pot. Right, Reed? Even every good piece. Even every, the thigh, the drumstick, chicken breast, Reed? The thigh. The what? The, the thigh. thigh. We love the thigh, that's chicken the juicy breast. part right there. <laughs> right? Is this pork? Let's see what he's eating, Reed? And the shoulder. You might get the shoulder, right, the breast, Reed? Fill it with the choice bones. Take the choice of the flock. No, take the choice of the pork. Take, take the, the choice, choice of, of the flock. flock. Take the choice of the swan. Take, take the, the choice, choice of, of the flock. flock. So we was cooking up chicken in the pot. Curry chicken, right? A uh, turkey, mm -hmm. right? What else we cook in the pot? You might boil it and shred the chicken, mm -hmm. right? You might make some nachos and take the chicken and kind of do your thing. Skillet, right. put right. it in there, fry it. It said take the choice of the what? Take the choice of the flock. You might take that, that flock, the bird. Read. And burn also the bones under it. Right, jump to verse 10. Verse 10. 
Heap on the wood. Read. Kindle the fire. Read. Consume the flesh. And spice it well. And do what? And, and spice, spice it well. What's that garlic powder? And, and spice, spice it well. What's that onion powder? And, and spice it well. We wasn't throwing up the spices on the pork. We were spicing up the chicken. We were spicing up clean foods. We was eating deer, chicken, right. beef. Right. The Lord said spice it well, but he never said throw the spices on the pork. Never said throw the hot sauce on it. Right? Spice it well, read. And let the bones be burned. And let sometimes you might keep the bones in there. You might make a stew or, or whatever. Read. Then set it empty upon the coals thereof. Right, so that's sit on that. So it tells you what our forefathers was eating. But they wasn't eating no pork. Right? So y'all can't eat no pork. And if you were eating pork, what do you have to do? Repent. Repent. Oh, okay. Repent. So repentance is acknowledging your sin and then turning away from it. Give me Ezekiel 8. So these people that say they saved and eaten all this pork, they didn't repent. No, they did not repent. <laughs> That's right. No, they That's did not right. repent. <laughs> They're still eating swine's flesh. Right. 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 right? And they have pork juice in their fingers and they're going to church. Jesus saves me. Eating all of the pork off their fingers. Right? Mm -hmm. God says you can't eat that. You know our forefathers, they were willing to die rather than eat pork. That's right. right. There are entire books in the Bible, believe it or not, where you had men that were willing to be tortured and killed instead of breaking God's commandments. That's how right. serious we took it. That's how serious we took it. But not like you said, sister. You got people in church saying, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. But you're breaking all of the commandments. The Lord did not die for you to keep living a life of sin. That's right. He died that as a sinner, you can repent from those sins, be under his grace, and learn how to live righteous as a new creature. That's right. They, they don't teach that in church. Oh, no. They say, come as you are, Jesus loves you, and they don't tell you how to amend your ways or how to get right with the Lord. And that's that's one commandment. So we got to come out of these churches. Because the churches don't... Been going to church. That's good. Get a sister hand. She hasn't been going to church. That's right. Oh. They only want is money. Money, money, money. money. Yeah. Right? That's all they want. That's why they passed that money plate around three times. Three times. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Honor offering. Give it love hours, offering. Hours. Build a hours. You tell you all your money out your pocket. All your money. Yeah. Right? All, write a check. Yes. And some churches got ATMs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, so yeah. you can't yeah, even I get in. I'm the with ATM yeah. in the church. Yep, yep. Yeah. You, you got people back there and they got to know your PIN code. Dang. You got to right. sign your PIN code yeah. and they got to, just in case they need more money after you leave. And they do competition. Shout out three uh, Thursdays. <laughs> okay, where do y'all worship? We well, we got a school that we have in um, Edgemere or Sparrows Point, but we come out here every Friday and every Saturday, right? We come out here to teach our people the truth. We have a place where the women, or you know, we all gather together, our families, the wives, the children, and we keep the commandments of the Lord. We pray together. We go over the scriptures as it is written. We don't collect people's money. We teach our people the truth. Right. right, and now we have to repent. We're going to give y'all three more before y'all leave. Right, give me Ezekiel chapter 18 and give me verse 24, and I want uh, Job 34 and 31 first. Right, Job chapter 34 and 31. So Ezekiel. after you find out the commandments, now you got to repent. Meaning ask for forgiveness and start keeping that commandment. Read that. Ezekiel 18. I want Job, Job 34 chapter 34 and verse 31. Read right. Job. Surely it is meet to be said unto the Most High. It is good to say unto God, I have borne chastisement. Right. I will not offend anymore. I will what? I will not offend anymore. I'm going to keep eating pork. I will not offend anymore. That's a good thing to say to God. I have borne chastisement. Chastisement is discipline and correction. We have borne or carried chastisement as a people. We've been going through suffering far too long. Right? Read that again from the top. Surely it is meet to be said unto the Most High, I have borne chastisement. I have went into slavery. I had my back beat in, I was in the human zoo, I was fed the alligators, I was whipped in the cotton field, I had yokes of iron around my neck, I had borne chastisement, I had enough, right, read, I will not offend anymore, I will what, I, I will, will not, not offend, offend anymore. anymore, read, Gun. that which I see teach not, it's like that which I see not teach thou me, and then you ask the Lord to teach you, right, because we're teaching you, but we're teaching you out of the Bible, right, and that's something they really don't do in church. They might read one verse and tell a lesson about how they grew up down south, right? You know, tell you that you're going to get a job and that Jesus loves you, feel good. But they don't go into the scriptures and break them down. Right, read. If I have done iniquity, 
I will do no more. So if we have sinned, we will do no more. We used to eat pork up here. We didn't know. Right. 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 How would we know? Who, who was really going to tell us? Right? Or we were raised up in the same environment as the rest of our people. With the same lifestyle, the same diet, and the same uh, upbringing. But now once we learn the knowledge of the law, we come out of those sins and we keep the commandments. Now we're going to give you all one more commandment. Give me Leviticus 11 and 9. Because you talked about um, seafood. Right? Leviticus 11 and 9. Leviticus chapter 11, 11 and, verse, and verse 9 and it reads These shall ye eat of all that are in the water Right, let's see the water, the seafood that you can eat Whatsoever have fins and scales What does it have to have? Whatsoever have, have, have fins and scales That's that fins and scales, read In the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers Them shall ye eat You can only eat fish that has fins and scales fins and If it come out the water and it don't have fins and scales You can't eat it so that means you can't eat what? Lobster. What else? Shrimp. What else? What'd you say, brother? Crawfish. There you go. Mussels. Oysters. What they call it in Baltimore or America? They call it good eating. Fine dining. Steak and lobster. $39.99. Garlic butter. Parmesan. Right? You can't eat that. You know that used to be fair to prisoners and slaves. But now the so-called white man put it on the pedestal. And that's the best thing you can ever eat. So you can't eat the bottom feed. They're called bottom feeders. They're called bottom feeders because their job is to feed on what's on the bottom of the ocean floor. They feed on dead bodies. They feed on uh, 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 feces, right? They feed on carcasses. They feed on, on, on anything that's ever touched the bottom of the water. You can touch the bottom of the water. They'll start feeding on you. Crab will start crabbing over there. The lobster will start lobstering. And they'll come over there and start getting down on you. Right? The mussel will start muscling. And they'll start eating you up, man. That clam will start cl taking them bites out of you, man, with a shell. So you can't eat that. No more crab. What else can we eat? The swan. What's the swan? The pig. The pig. Right? And when is the Sabbath day? Saturday. But, but it really begins Friday night. Because your days begin from sundown to sundown. In America, they say midnight to midnight. Right? But according to the Bible, when the sun goes down, the day is over. So right now, the sun is setting. So the Sabbath day is coming in. So your Sabbath day is from Friday night all the way up until Saturday night. Read that. Genesis 1 and 5 and it reads, right? And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And what? And the evening, evening and the morning, morning were the first, first day. That's in Genesis. The evening and the morning were the first day. Your day starts in the evening, and it goes up into the morning, and then when that next evening kicks in, a new day begins. That's how God did the creation, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, etc. And you go through it, and it goes to the evening and the morning. Evening and the morning. Evening and the morning. Right? Evening and the morning. The Sabbath day, Friday evening until Saturday evening. All right? One more commandment. Right? Give me Leviticus 19. And give me verse 17. So who are we according to the Bible? What did God call us? The children. The children of, of God. The children of Islam? Not Islam, no, no. No, oh my God. No. I thought that was No. No. Not children of Islam. Give me Deuteronomy 2 down Right? We want y'all to leave with two important things. Number one, knowing your nationality according to the Bible. And what God's chosen people. Number two, knowing how to repent and keep God's laws and commandments. Faith. Read that. Deuteronomy 29 and 1 and it reads right these are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel the children of Islam the, the children, children of, of Israel. Israel children of Sunday morning the, the children, children of, of Israel. Israel who are we brother who are we who are we who children of Israel Screaming, I'm black and I'm proud. We used to scream that. Had your black fist in the air, right? Had your nasty, sweaty black glove, right? Had that thick black coat, right? 
and, and your red, black, and green flag. What did the Lord ever give us a red, black, and green flag? Right. The Lord never gave us a red, bl black, and green flag. We just p make it up stuff, man. Right. The Lord didn't give us Kwanzaa. He didn't give us Mother's Day. Right. He didn't even give us Christmas. Right. Right. God never gave us Easter with eggs and bunnies. Right. Those are man-made things. Guess what God did give us? He gave us the Sabbath. Right. The Passover. Right. The Pentecost draws not. Right. Right. He gave That's us right. The Feast of Eleventh Bread. Right. These are our holidays that God gave us, which He calls holy days. And guess what? We don't know none of our holy days. Right. But we just celebrated Mother's Day, didn't we? <laughs> right. Then we celebrate Mother's Day. Teach up. What do we do on Mother's Day? Breakfast in bed. Right. What do we do? Cleaned up the house. Cleaned up the house. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaned up the house. What else did we do? You said what? You gave her a card. Right? But guess what? Give me Jeremiah 10. We're not saying you can't love your mother. You're supposed to love your mother. The Lord said, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. But you honor them according to God's laws and commandments. Right. Not according to what this man says. This man is a so-called white man. Right, read that. 10 and 1. Right. Jeremiah 10 and 1 and it reads. Right. Hear ye the word which the Lord speak unto you, O house of Israel. Read. Thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Read that again. Learn not the way of the heathen. Read it one more time. Learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen, meaning the other nations. Don't learn their ways. We were called to be separate from the other nations. Remember, we read that God says that we are a holy people. Right. The word holy means separate, set apart. Holy doesn't mean, oh. that's, that's not what holy means. Holy means set apart. So we can't be set apart if we follow what everybody else is doing. If you're eating what they eat, you're thinking how they're thinking. You're serving their gods that they set up. We're supposed to be set apart. And if we're not set apart, then we lose who we are. Right? Look at, look at our people. We're destroyed. Our youth is destroyed. Our old men are destroyed. Our young men are destroyed. Our young men are destroyed. We have to keep God's commandments. What did God call us? The children of Israel. There you go, sister. Right. right. The right. children of Israel. That's right. And y'all are from the tribe of Judah. So you would be an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right? Read Leviticus 20, 24. Leviticus 20 and 24 and it reads. Right. But if I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land. We're going to have our own land. Read. And I will give, I will give it unto you to possess it. Read. A land that, that floweth with milk and honey. Meaning a beautiful land. It's not talking about Baltimore. Baltimore flows with rats <laughs> and lead, lead poison. It flows with mice. The rat has become a slogan for Baltimore. They have conditioned the people to think that the rat is just a big deal in Baltimore. It's on people's t-shirts, coffee mugs. The Lord said our land flows with milk and honey. It smells like frankincense and myrrh, aloes and calamus and cinnamon. Right, read on. I am the Lord your God. Which have separated you. Which have what? Which, which have separated you. I'm going to read that slow. Which have what? Which, which have separated you. From what? From other people. The Lord said he separated us from other people. Think about that. Which means we should never even know what they know. We should never have been following their ways. We're supposed to be set apart in our own land. That's right. With our own laws. Our own commandments. Our own heritage. Our own way of dressing. Our own ways of thinking, right. how we deal with our children is according to the Most High, how we deal with our men is according to the Most High, how we deal with our wives. All of this has to be done according to God's commandments. Because as soon as we break the commandments, we start following what everybody else is doing. And once we start following what they're doing, we're going to start breaking the commandments and sinning. And the more we sin, the more affliction that we go through as a people. And we're trying to get our people out of this oppression. That's right. By teaching repentance, which is forsaking sin and keeping God's commandments. You have any questions? Everything makes sense? Now, as we when we repent, who are we repenting to? What is God's name? Because if I say God, there are a lot of so-called gods, right? 
How do you know I'm not talking about Allah? Or Buddha, right? Or Shiva, or Brahma, or Ganesh, or Zeus, right? Or Apollos, if I say God. You wouldn't know, right? You really wouldn't know, say I believe in God. You have to well, guess that well, what God is he talking about, right? Give me uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 8 and 5. So that's that's important, knowing God's name. You would agree, right? We should, what's your nationality? I'm black American. Black American? Okay, your father's black? Yes. Okay, so we should know God's nationality. I mean, uh, God's name. So read that. First read Proverbs 30 and 4. 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, and it reads, Right. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth. So there be that are called gods, read. As there be gods many. As there be what? As, as there be, be gods, gods many. There are many gods that the earth worships, read. And lords many. And lords many. But to us, there, it, there is but one God. To us, the Israelites, there is but one God. Read. The Father, of whom are all things, and we and him, and one Lord, Yahweh Mashiach, but whom are all things, and we by him. And we by him. So what is God's name? Give me Psalms 83 and 18. What is God's name? Surely we would want to know, because I can't just call you woman, right? You wouldn't, nobody would like that. Hey man. Hey boy, right. right? That makes no sense, right? So read that. Psalm chapter 83 and verse 18. What is God's out, name? That men may know that thou, whose name alone. Though he has many names. Whose, whose name, name alone. alone. He has a thousand names. Whose, whose name, name alone. alone. Whose name alone. Is Jehovah. Is what? Is Jehovah. The Lord's name is Jehovah. Is the most high. Is Jehovah. Read. But the most high over all the earth. His name is what? Yahweh. Huh. Can y'all say that? Yahweh. Yahweh. Yah. Yahweh. There you go, brother. Can you say that, sister? Yahweh. That's God's name. Now, what, is, what does God look like? Do we know? It's unknowable. What if it's in the Bible? Wake him up. Uh. You gave me that look like I don't believe that. Give me Daniel 7 and 9. It tells you straight up and down in the Bible. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. Read out. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Right. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Daniel saw the Ancient of Days, which is another title for God, sitting on his throne. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. He had an all-white garment on. So God has a body. Right. Read on. And the hair of his head. What kind of hair do you think God has? Let's see, in the hair of his head, like the pure wool. Like the what? Like, like the, the pure, pure wool. wool. What people have woolly hair? Teach, huh? People of African descent. People of African, not everybody of African descent, right? Because we're not of African descent. Teach, huh? We're a Semitic people, right? We come from Shem, right? So we come from Shem, all the way from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? So a lot of people have woolly hair. But guess what? The Lord is the God of the Israelites. That's right, that's right. Right? We have woolly hair. I have woolly hair. The butler has woolly hair. That's right. So God would be a so-called black man according to the Bible. Do you accept that? You wouldn't dispute it. So God has woolly hair, which means that this is not God. Agreed. And that's not God. They know. Right? God looks like me. God looks like our people. Because we are made in the image of God. That's right. Nowhere in the Bible do you read about God having long blonde hair flowing in the wind. That's nothing but but uh, white man mythology. Right? We got to come out of these lies and know that God looks like us. If I see my brother and I know he's made in the image of God, I'm not going to rob that man. Right. I'm not going to kill him. I'm not going to be inclined to oppress him. Right? And set him up. Right? We're going to treat our brother as we would the Lord. This is why the so-called white man, right, we're just going to call, we're, we're, we're going to tell the truth up here. Right. We're not politically correct. This is not the, the space for that. Right. It's not a safe space right here. Right. Right. This is not your, 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 your HR room at work. Right. Right. This is not a politically correct room. This is a unho, uh, uh, what do they call it, no holds barred. Right. No, no, no filter type of environment right here. The so-called white man does not want us to know that we look like Jesus and look like God because they want you to think that they are God and they are Jesus. Wake them up, huh? And you can cleave to them and love to them, love them 
and go to them for everything and love them and fantasize and worship them and depend on them, right? And hate your own people because your brother looks like an ape and a gorilla, according to them, and he looks like Jesus and God. So it's psychological warfare in our people to make us hate each other and love the oppressor. It was done by design, right? You agree, and this is an actual math. Right? Are you a friend of history? You study history? You try, okay, well look, that man, we all two, that man is an actual man. We wasn't gonna go this deep, but tonight we're gonna switch it up. Right? Tonight we're gonna go that deep. That's right. Right? We normally don't go that deep. Right? But but we'll do it for y'all see. This man, his name is Caesar Borges. He is the second son of the Pope, Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Have you heard of Michelangelo? Yeah. Michelangelo, during the Renaissance, painted the image of Caesar Borgias, that's his real name, as the new face of Jesus Christ. You can look this up, right? Look at this. He even pulled it up. Oh, they got it right there. Give me uh, Wisdom of Solomon 15 to 4. You said what? Yeah, I mean, and our people don't know that. All we know is basketball and rap music. And I, not all of us, but that's the generic <laughs> put on us. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 4. See, if you think about what we're saying, we can prove it in the Bible. Right, read that. For neither did the mischievous invention of men deceive us. Read. Nor an image. Nor what? Nor, nor an, an image. image. Read. Spotted with diverse colors. So God said that this image and false images, they don't deceive us. That may deceive everybody else. But we're not like everybody else. Right. We're going to read the Bible for what it is. Right. I'm not just going to hear what somebody tells me about the Bible. I'm going to go on there and read it for myself. Right. right. Read on. And I'm not going to let nobody take me away from the Bible. That's right. Right. I don't care if they're a friend, a colleague, if I'm on a date, if I'm married. If the Bible's coming out, hey, guess what? I'm all in. Right. I'm right. down there. Read on. The painter's fruitless labor. The what? The, the painter's, painter's fruitless, fruitless labor. labor. All of these Russian icons and paintings that they had during the time of the uh, Renaissance. Where is that? On this one. Okay, it's on this one. Look, the, look at this. What? Right, we're going to give y'all up close and personal. This is what the paintings of the men of the Bible originally looked like. Right? This is from... Is that Ethiopian? Uh, Russia. Oh, Russia, Russian Renaissance, Eastern Eastern European, right? Russian icon of the three holy higher arts: Saint Basil, Saint Gregory, and Saint John. Do they look like Chinese gods? No. Do they look like white Jesus? Ah, uh, the original paintings of the people of the Bible are brown-skinned people. Right. Do you know how much these paintings cost? Well over three thousand dollars. Four thousand dollars. You can go to certain mausoleums and places in uh, in, uh, in Russia, and they still have these dark images. Yep. But then you'll see the white images not on Hollywood and movies, TV, artwork, because again, they don't want our people to know that we're the people of the Bible. They want they want to set that image that they've always been the people of God. That's why the angels look like what people? Blonde hair, blue eyes. But what color are the angels according to the Bible? Wake them up, huh? We don't know. Hey, yeah. And we know. We've been going through it in the Bible. What, take a guess. Give me Ezekiel 40 and 3. Take a guess. What color are the angels in the Bible? I thought angels were multi-eyed, multi-limbed beings of uh, yeah, well, beyond angels. our kin. You okay, know? Well, right. Beyond our form. Angels are spirits, right? You have, some angels have multi-forms, right? That forehead, some of them. But their color remains the same. Right? We're going to show you that. Ezekiel 40 and verse 3. Bring it out. And he brought me thither. And behold, there was a man whose, whose appearance was like the appearance of bread. Ezekiel saw a man, which is an angel, whose appearance was what? The appearance of brass. What was his appearance? The, the appearance, appearance of brass. What color is brass? Wake him up. Bro. See that? So are the angels little white babies? With wings and diapers and uh, a bow and an arrow and they poke you in the butt and you fall in love on Valentine's Day and you go to Jared's and the guy gets on one knee and he pops the big question to you, man. No, that's not what the angels look like. The angels have brown skin and woolly hair. Right. God has woolly hair, brown skin. 
right? We got to stop the lies that we've been taught and actually open up the Bible and know it's talking about us. It's not a universal book of all races under the sun, right? Every nation has an account of their records, ancestry, history, right? China, the Chinese, the Japanese. I'm sorry to ask you this question because I think what you're sharing with us is accurate history and actually really useful, but I have seen some examples of Hebrew Israelites online that uh -huh. seem to be rather anti-Semitic. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering if... Give me um, Job 13 and 15. It, that's something I've seen from some black Hebrew Israelites online. Okay, anti-Semitic. Now, first and foremost... Well, I'm against white Jews. Against white Jews. Yes, white okay. Europe, Jews of white European Okay, now give me uh, Job, I believe we're on 13 and 5. Job chapter 13 verse 5. Look it out. Oh, that ye were all together. 13 and 15. 13 and 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain mm. mine own ways before him. Right. He also shall be my salvation. What the Lord say? He, he also, also shall, shall be my salvation. Read. For an hypocrite. For a who? For, For a an hypocrite. hypocrite. Read. Shall not come before him. So a hypocrite is what? What's the definition of a hypocrite? Somebody that says something, but they don't do it. So when we deal with the word anti-Semitic, the word anti-Semitic has been attributed only to one race of people, which is the Jewish man, right? Right or wrong? They bear and carry the anti-Semitic and nobody else has the right to claim that, right? Now, the word uh, um, anti means what? Against. Semitic goes back to what biblical man in the Bible? Do we know? Wake him up. Uh. Genesis 9 and 26. Go on. Right? Give me Ecclesiastes 49 and 26. There's a man in the Bible by the name of Noah. We've all heard of Noah, right? Noah had three sons. Shem, Ham, and Jeph. The word uh, Shemitic or Semitic goes back to Shem in the Bible. All right, now read that. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 26. This is how they're Bro. able to so-called trace their lineage. Now read that. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. What the Lord say? Blessed, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Read. And Canaan shall be a servant. So there's a man called Shem in the Bible. We're about to explain it to you. I know you got to go. We're going to make it quick. And give me Sirach 49 and 26. Right? Ecclesiastes chapter 49 and 26. Now, the, the, the Latin way or the Gre Greek old way or Greek way... Uh, Shem is written S-E-M, Sim, all right? Shem in the Hebrew is, is Sham, which means name or place. So Sim is the translation of Shem. That makes sense? Now read that. So I write 49 and verse 6. Yo. I want 49 and... Yeah, 16 is So I write 49 and 16. Shem. No, no, read it as it is written. Sim. What does it say? Sim. Sim. But it's really talking about Shem. Sim. And Seth. Seth is the son of Adam. Were a great honor among men. Read. And so was Adam above every living thing in the creation. So, guess what? If you're anti-Semitic, you know what that means? That means you are against the people that come from Shem. Does the so-called white man, is he the only man that comes out of Shem? Guess who else comes out of Shem? Not everyone. We come out of Shem. The so-called uh, blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, the Israelites, they come out of Shem. Guess how we know that? Because when you deal with Shem's genealogy, you have Shem. Shem had five sons. Shem had Aram, Lud, Arphaxad. Arphaxad is the chief son. He had Ashur and Elam. Those are Shem's five sons. Out of his five sons, our fat sad was the chosen son. Out of our fat sad down in genealogy comes Terah, or Nahor rather, Terah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All of those men come from Shem. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. His sons are Shemitic. So when you're anti-Semitic, you're also against the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men. That's right. But due to the so-called white man having a monopoly on the school system, on a curriculum, on the media, he has propagated the idea 
that he is the only one on the earth that can be Shemitic, which is biblically false. That's right. Because you have many people that come out of Shem. Guess who else comes out of Shem? So-called Chinese men, the Moabites, they come out of Shem. Yep. The Ammonites, the biblical Japanese men, they come out of Shem. Right. The Arabs, the Ishmaelites, they come out of Shem. Right. The Midianites, they come out of Shem. A lot of people come out of Shem. So if you're truly anti-Semitic, it can't just be relegated to the so-called Jewish man who's not really a Jew. He's actually an Edomite. So it's not a matter of black Hebrew Israelites being uh, anti-Semitic, because first of all, we're not black. We've never called ourselves black Hebrew Israelites. That's what the media calls us, right? I don't have black skin, right? We're Hebrew Israelites, and the Hebrews come from Eber, and Eber comes from who? Shem. Shem. So don't, don't, don't follow the narrative. You have to search these scriptures, right? Right. And a so-called white man is not a Jew. We're gonna show you that before you leave. I know you gotta go. Revelation, one more. Revelation two and nine. The book of Revelation to this. Chapter 2 and verse 9. Yo, yeah. Yo. Hey, they're Shemitic too. They may not know what's going on, but they're Shemitic. They're Elon. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Yo. I know thy works. I know thy works. And tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. Which what? Which, which say they are, are Jews. Jews. Which what? Which, which say they are Jews. Which they say that they are Jews, and what? And are not. And what? And, and are not. not. Read. But are the synagogue of Satan. They're the synagogue of Satan. It's in the Bible. In the Bible. They say that they're Jews, but they're not. The real Jews look like us. That's Bible. right. All praises All to the praise. Most High. We're the Israelites, sister, according to the Bible. That's us right here. All right. All praise to the Most High. Thank you. Okay. All praises. All praises. All praises. All praises to the Most High. God! The word is going up. God! Right? The word is going up. Right? The word is going out through the spirit and inspiration of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Give me Revelation 18 to 21. Give me the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and 1. Right? Give me St. John 12 and 28, man. And I hope they redo up the harbor because more sheep will come out. Yeah. Right. There's more sheep coming out, right, man. It's right, not right. like the days of the uh, pestilence, man. Right. That's right. There's four of us out here, man. And they'll pull up and say, you guys are too close. <laughs> <laughs> Those days were hell, man. Y'all need to split up. Ain't nobody out here, man. With a yardstick. Yeah, with a yardstick, man. Those was the bad, those was the dark the dark ages. <laughs> the dark ages of the harbor, man. <laughs> the dark ages of the harbor. The dark, the dark ages. Bring that out, King. Revelation! Chapter 18 and verse 21. Bring it out. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus will violence. Thus will hurt. Thus will violence. Thus will march. Thus will violence. Thus will violence. Thus will violence. Read. Shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. That's right. Give me Genesis chapter 49 and give me verse 1. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 1. Bring it out. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together. Stay at home. Gather yourselves together. Do your own thing. Gather yourselves together. Individualize. Gather yourselves together. Read. That I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. And you living in the last days. You living in the end of the world. If you don't repent, come out of sin, and keep the commandments, you will die the death of the wicked. That's right. right. Give me St. John 12 and 28. The book of St. John, chapter 12 and verse 28. Bring it out. Father, glorify thy name. What y'all was trying to say? Father, glorify thy name. What the son of man say? Father, glorify thy name. What the king of kings say? Father, glorify thy name. Read. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I both glorified it and will glorify it again. And with that, we want to give all honor and all glory to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach, Guam Malak Yabushai. Quam Nashala! Quam Nashala! Quam Nashala! Quam Nashala! Quam Nashala!